this is my build log for my GH60. So I got the green switches from uh, the group buy and the casings were a little bit wobbly as you can see here. So I thought it would be a good chance for me to use the switch covers that I got from um, Kin in Korea. Uh, there's a group buy a few weeks ago. So I went ahead and started to take apart the Cherry MX greens that I got. And uh, it's pretty easy using some uh, binder clip edges and then I got onto the Aristotles that I got from another group by and as you can see the Aristotles are absolute junk the casing is just terrible and it falls apart so uh, don't bother trying to do it without breaking them the bit that you want is the inside anyway it's like an oyster and there's the pearl the beautiful pearl inside it that's what you want to make the ultimate clicky switches so I started to lube the inside with my um, I think I was using Crytox at this time so I went ahead and lubed those and then I lubed the edges of the slider as well. You can see the, the huge uh, click leaf thingies on the on the plastic part there. And then I did this little little bit on the springs. I've done this before and I put way too much on on the MX Blues that I've got. So I put a really, really small amount in there and uh, it was it was pretty easy. It's a pretty easy mod to do. And then you just replace the Aristotle stem in the cherry housing. But you can go the extra mile, put these uh, switch films, that's what they're called, the switch films that I got from Kin, just to stop the top housing from sliding against the bottom housing. And if you do that, it does really, really eliminate that movement. How much difference it makes in practice? Not sure, don't care. <laughs> but it works. So after a few hours, I had some Cheristotle switches. Great. So then I decided to clip the legs off them. And I don't usually do this, and I kind of wish that I hadn't done this. But there you go, you live and learn, because it made the switches a lot less stable combined with the plate, which is a bit kind of gappy <laughs> in the first place. But so uh, I had to fix that later, but it ended up OK. And then I went ahead and started lubing. And I use uh, Crytox lube in this case. Uh, it's all gone now, so I've had to downgrade into cheaper super lube. It seems to be working OK, but I wish I could afford to bring that Crytox stuff over. Um, in larger quantities, but it's really expensive. So I'm just lubing up the sliders and these are already clipped stabilizers. You just cut the little uh, feet on the bottom of them. It makes them feel nicer. So I'm just lubing up the contacts uh, that hit on the inside of the stabilizer as well. Very painstaking work, as you can see. You've got to be really, really careful. And get it all the way inside there to the, the parts that are going to contact with the metal um, part of the stabilizer. Get that in there. And then I use a thicker kind of uh, lube. I switched to um, super lube for my stabilizer lube. And it seems to be working pretty well. So I put some super lube on the corner bits where they're going to be touching the plastic. And then that's, that's it done. So I did the same for the other stabilizers that I'm going to use. I think there are only three uh, stabilizers on, on this board. And then you just slide them in. So when you put your stabilizers in, you need to make sure that you have the foot part in the big hole and the squashy part in the small hole. There's a better shot of it there going in, and it should just click in pretty easily. Got to make sure you do this before you put the plate on, otherwise you'll be embarrassed. <laughs> I've never done that, obviously. I've never, never, ever made that mistake, and I didn't in this video if you're keen-eyed. And then that's the spacebar stabilizer on there. So as you can see, I'm putting some of the switches into the plate to make sure that I can get the plate and the PCB lined up correctly. And I noticed when I was putting these in that they're pretty loose. I think I, I show it a bit later on, but they're pretty loose in the, in the plate, which I wasn't too pleased about which compounded the problems that I created for myself by clipping off those legs. Now, if I'd left those legs on, I wouldn't have had the problems that I had later on. So, lesson learned. And then it's time to start soldering in the switches. So I just started with a few to get everything lined up properly, and then I'll get on with the rest of them. Lovely. And here I am demonstrating an incredible lack of safety awareness there. I, I do this so many times and I keep saying I'm going to get one of those little rollers that you can get your, uh, your soldering on, but I never do. And I always end up doing this. Your finger gets closer and closer and closer. So it's pretty poor technique and a little bit dangerous. So don't, don't copy me. And then I put all the switches in. And I think I've heard this said uh, by a few people that have Aristotle's is that they're a little bit inconsistent in terms of 
um, how the switches and the caps end up lining up on them. And I did find this as well, but I think it was mainly because the pegs on the bottom of the switches have been clipped and then the plate wasn't really a snug fit for any of the switches, even the, the single switches. So I had to do a little bit of touching up afterwards. So once everything is soldered in, then I decided to give it a bit of a clean up with some isopropyl alcohol and some cotton buds there. So you don't really have to do this, I don't think, but I like it to look a little bit neat. It wasn't pristine at the end, but it looked a lot better. And then I got some wipes and just wiped off the residue that was, uh, that was on there as well with this little brush, some more alcohol and uh, a Kim wipe which I saw on somebody else's video. I can't remember whose it was, but uh, yeah, it's good for touching up all that residue. And then finally, I was ready to put the keycaps on and I got some uh, Enjoy PBT milky ones. I think these are milky ones anyway. The very, very white looking ones. And I really like the look of them. And I was, I'd always wanted to try some Enjoy PBT caps, so I finally got some. So I decided to make an all white board. You can see there that the space bar doesn't match. That's because the space bar that came with that kit, it was a little bit warped. Or anyway, it didn't like playing with the uh, the stabilizers that I had on there and it wouldn't depress properly and the switch wouldn't click. So I just put a DSA space bar on there and it looks wonderful. So many, many years ago when I ordered the keyboard originally, I ordered it with green switches. And now that the keyboard and the switches have arrived, I've decided that I don't really like the clicky switches that I've tried. So I was kind of a bit bummed out when I remembered that I'd ordered green switches. But then I also remembered that I had a load of Aristotle's sitting in a drawer somewhere. So I decided to put the two together. And I wasn't really expecting that much because as I said, I'm not really that keen on clicky switches, but... I have to say, they really do sound absolutely fantastic. And even when the board is not plugged in, I find myself just like typing on it anyway. So that concludes my very, very long overdue GH60 build. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.